Police say David Fajardo got upset about a parking space on Thursday at El Modelo Mexican Foods in Southwest Albuquerque. Cops say Fajardo pulled out a gun and threatened to shoot the couple and a girl if they didn't give him the space. He is charged with aggravated assault and child abuse. The judge set his bond at $1,000. Dan Lewis and Tim Keller are fighting for your vote to be the next mayor of Albuquerque. KOAT is partnering with the Albuquerque Journal for a live debate coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Action 7 News reporter Chris Guadaro tells us what to expect from these two candidates. Yeah, Tim Keller says he will bring accountability to the city, while Dan Lewis tells us he will use his business sense to foster job growth and economic opportunities. Now, Keller is currently the New Mexico State Auditor. He says his office uncovered millions in fraud and wasteful spending. He was a state senator beforehand. Dan Lewis is a city councilor and entrepreneur who says he's created businesses and jobs in Albuquerque. Both candidates consider crime to be the top concern as mayor, and some Albuquerque natives we spoke with agree. I would like to know specifically what they're going to do to deal with the homelessness and the crime that comes with that along Central and in downtown. You know, I just want to know where he's going to put resources and why he's going to do it. That runoff election is November 14th. The debate starts in less than an hour. You can see it here at 6 on KOAT. Chris Guadaro, KWT Action 7 News. Don't get too used to this beautiful fall weather. There are big changes happening. Joe explains in the Super Doppler 7 forecast. That's right, Doug. Things are getting ready to turn on a dime. So for this evening, just enjoy it. It'll be a very comfortable fall evening for your Sunday. However, tomorrow, as we get into the afternoon, on into the evening hour, winds are going to be gusting to 40 miles an hour, and it will be turning cooler. So let's go ahead and bring you up to date on our 24-hour planner. Here's that pleasant evening. It'll be a pleasantly cool. Temperatures in the 60s, a little bit chill in the air, but pretty normal for this time of year as we wake up in the 40s. Now, as we get into the afternoon, those winds are going to start to gust. Temperatures won't be quite as warm as what we encountered today. And it's not just with us in the afternoon. It's all night long tomorrow. All right, daytime highs will be in the 40s and 50s and 60s, starting off with the 40s, warming into the 50s and 60s. So not as warm as what we're having right now, but that powerful front will be dropping temperatures 20 degrees. You see a high of only 40 in Raton with some late day snow showers and look at that only in the 50s throughout the Roswell area not too bad though Farmington Gallup on into Demi as we look at Las Vegas you're looking at some snow showers tomorrow night most of that will be across the northern mountains and that's when we get into a wintry pattern as we move into the Halloween time frame we'll look about that coming up you may not see many people around a popular national park the next time you visit. The Salinas Pueblo National Monument in Socorro has scaled back hiring in the middle of a federal audit of the park's hiring practice. That means you'll see fewer park rangers who are usually hired as seasonal workers. More than 32,000 people visit this landmark, pumping nearly $2 million into the economy. The audit is expected to last four to six months. Police are desperately trying to find two dangerous criminals. Anchor Todd Kurt shows you who they are looking for in this week's New Mexico's Most Wanted. Both of these guys have avoided law enforcement for months now, and U.S. Marshals are asking for your help tracking them down. Let's start off with Martin Lopez. He's well known to law enforcement and has a history of running from police. He's wanted on a probation violation that stems from a lengthy criminal history, including several drug charges. Many times, if you listen to the details of each of these, it tells you they have a drug addiction and they cannot stay clean or they do not want to stay clean. And clean and they resort to crime to feed their addiction. Next up is Sean Montoya. He too has a lengthy criminal history. He's part of the Serenos gang. He's wanted on a probation violation as part of drug charges. We're just looking to find him and get him off the street. There's the number on your screen. If you know where to find Martin Lopez or Sean Montoya, call the U.S. Marshal Service. Todd Kurtz, KOAT Action 7 News. According to the Archbishop of Santa Fe, the church is working to prevent further abuse by the clergy. Archbishop John Wester says the church now has a zero tolerance policy, removing any clergy member who's been credibly accused of sexual abuse. Seminary candidates must also undergo thorough psychological screening before being accepted into seminary. Webster says only two reports of misconduct have been reported since 1993 because of the new measure. New on 7, a nuclear safety panel says Los Alamos National Lab did not perform well during safety drills. The facility went through a series of simulations to show how it would respond to potential emergencies like radioactive leaks or earthquakes. According to the Defense Nuclear Facilities Board, they say there were numerous weaknesses dating back to 2014. 
The National Nuclear Safety Administration said steps are being taken to improve emergency preparedness and responses. Tomorrow, the community will say goodbye to a New Mexico music legend, Alberto Nelson Sanchez, better known as Al Hurricane, who was a music icon with humble beginnings playing for the public in Old Town. He passed away last week at the age of 81 after battling prostate cancer. His funeral service will be at Queen of Heaven Church tomorrow. The service begins at 10 a.m. and the public is welcome. If you can't make it, we'll stream the service live for you on KOAT.com and our Facebook page. Kindergartners in the Albuquerque Public School District are the most likely to be regularly absent. According to a report published by the paper, 17% of kindergartners have 10 or more unexcused absences for the current school year. An unexcused absence includes non-school sponsored activities, trips or vacations outside of school breaks. Fifth graders had the lowest rate for elementary students at about 14 percent. Well, here in New Mexico, we love our chili and the season's almost over. Can you believe it? We checked in with some local roasters to see how this year's crop has turned out. Chili season has been really good this year. Everything's been looking good. We're coming to the last of the year and you can see it's uh, autumn roast. It's mixed red and green. Roasters say you've got until around mid-November to pick up your fresh chili this year. You know, when the season starts, you drive by places like, oh, I smell it. And now when you drive right. by the same place, soon it'll be, wait, where did it go? I know. I love, that's the best part when you yeah. start smelling them. Even like, you know, late August, you right. go to some of the grocery stores and we'll have them going. And I know. You I ever go hang out smell. by the roasting pit? Just I have, for fun? actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the World Series is tied. When we come back, we're going to show you some highlights of last night's game, plus a touching moment that melted hearts all over the country. And you've got to see it to believe it. A 10 year old leading police on a high speed chase. We will show you new video of the wild joy ride right after the break. You're watching KOAT Action 7 News live at 5. The World Series has a lot of New Mexico ties. Albuquerque natives Alex Bregman and Ken Giles both played. Yeah, and now the Dodgers and the Astros are tied up. Here's ABC's Marcus Moore with some highlights of the controversy surrounding the game and a touching moment. Last night's World Series bout started and ended on the pitcher's mound. Both starters bringing the heat in a game that went without a run until the sixth inning. Forsyth has tied this game. But the Dodgers proved to be too much in the end. A massive home run by Jock Peterson in the ninth put the cherry on top of a five-run inning for Los Angeles. Three-run shot makes it 6-1 LA in the ninth. Mixed reactions from fans as Astros infielder Yuli Gurriel took to the plate one day after apologizing for this offensive gesture after hitting a home run Friday night on Dodgers' Yu Darvish from Japan. The league deciding to let Gurriel play out the World Series, choosing instead to suspend him without pay for the first five games of next season. Please welcome seven-year-old Haley Dawson. But it was this touching moment before the game that melted hearts. Seven-year-old Haley Dawson of Las Vegas clutching a baseball with a 3D printed prosthetic hand, throwing out the first pitch. So you hold it like that. She's missing three fingers on her right hand, but it is not stopping her from bringing the heat. How fast is your pitch, Haley? One mile per hour. <laughs> One mile per hour? How great is that? Well, the series is tied at two games each. Game five is tonight, but it looks like pitcher Ken Giles may not play the rest of the World Series, according to ESPN, after he allowed run-ins six of his seven postseason appearances. He was told he's no longer the team's closer. There is a manhunt underway for a missing West Virginia inmate. Todd Boys was seen Wednesday morning at 6, not in his orange jumpsuit, but in street clothes, casually walking out of jail. Despite numerous headcounts, jail officials say they didn't notice he was gone until 37 hours later. But one lawyer says jail staff knew sooner because he alerted them about the missing inmate after his client, another prisoner there, told him about it. It's one of those situations where I had to let the jail know that somebody had escaped from Charlie Five and apparently did nothing. Boys was supposed to be in court Friday, facing three to 20 years for a carjacking and police chase. Authorities say based on his criminal history in both West Virginia and Ohio, they think he is armed and dangerous. Hurricanes Harvey, Irma and Maria took a financial toll on corporate America. The storms grounded flights, halted production and closed stores. Most American industries have operations in Texas and Florida, and some have locations in Puerto Rico. Cruise lines, airlines and insurance companies were particularly hard hit. The storm's ripple effects were felt in unexpected fields as well. Budweiser and Bud Light sales were down in retail stores and motorcycle maker Harley Davidson said sales were down as well. 
Puerto Rico's governor is demanding that the island's power company cancel the $300 million contract with Whitefish Energy Holdings. This comes after people started criticizing the Montana company after Hurricane Maria. Right now, federal legislators are asking for an investigation into the contract awarded to the small company from the Interior Secretary's hometown. Today, the head of Puerto Rico's government power company says the contract will be scrapped after it finishes current work on recovery efforts. The cancellation will delay work by 10 to 12 weeks. Tonight, we are learning more about what's in the government files related to the assassination of President Kennedy. Some documents detail Lee Harvey Oswald's trip to Mexico City weeks before he killed the president. While he was there, he traveled to the Russian embassy and spoke to a KGB officer. Other documents show plots to kill Fidel Castro. One of them used a contaminated dive suit. In a surprising twist, other papers show the FBI had once suspected Lyndon B. Johnson of being a member of the KKK, but no proof was ever provided. Tonight we have a scare in the air to tell you about. A flight traveling from Milan to Miami was diverted to Canada after the plane's windshield cracked. Action 7 News reporter Kate DeMush explains. These were some of the horrifying moments for passengers on an American Airlines flight from Milan to Miami. We would quickly dropped from 38,000 feet to 20,000 feet. Overnight, this crack windshield inside the cockpit forcing the aircraft to divert to an airport in Canada. The whole front windshield of the plane was just demolished and with a million cracks across it. Sometimes this is caused by the aircraft hitting something. But most often it's some sort of a mechanical failure where a heater uh, on the windshield makes the glass actually break. Terrifying passengers sharing their tense trip on social media. This, the latest scare in the air. Early Saturday morning, a plane carrying Oklahoma City Thunder players landed looking like this. OKC's Carmelo Anthony posting this picture to Instagram writing what possibly could we have hit in the sky at this time of night. Another player saying it felt like hitting Superman in midair. Delta confirming it was birds mid flight that likely left the dent in the front of the plane. Something like this is actually fairly routine uh, in terms of landing the airplane and, uh, and keeping people safe. Now maintenance crews are looking into the crash. Officials with the Thunder say the flight was a little rough, but nothing seemed terribly out of the ordinary. Thankful no injuries. New on 7, a lot of New Mexicans headed to Hartnett Park for the First Responders 5K today. Organizers say it's an event to bring the community and our first responders together. This year, there were more than 250 people there. The event was started because of first responder Robin Hopkins, who was shot a few years ago. The proceeds go to helping first responders when they are hurt in the line of duty. It is video you have to see to believe. It shows the aftermath of a 10-year-old's dangerous high-speed joyride. ABC Stephanie Ramo shows us the new video. You want to read him Miranda? I don't know if it's going to matter because he's juvie, but... Even officers were puzzled about how to best handle arresting this elementary school age suspect. His crime? He led police on a 50 mile chase and he's only 10. Yeah, I'm in jail. Why would you do this? I kept trying to get you to stop. In this new dash cam video, we see the boy once he finally stops the car. The child's parents arrive just as he's being taken into custody. I want y'all to take it. Jail. That's what I want. Uh, we're not taking him home. Okay. Well, he'll, he'll go to he'll go to detention home. And the cops weren't the only authority figure after him. His mom was also in the hot pursuit. My ten-year-old stole his dad's car, and I'm following him. He's running from me. Watch as the car crosses over the highway median. And he's running. And into oncoming traffic. Block him in here. Do not let him get by. You block him in. The wild ride, reaching speeds of 100 miles per hour on the Ohio Turnpike. If I hadn't yielded to him, he would have hit me back there I tried to roadblock and he went right at me. The 50 mile long death defying ride ends after the boy knocks over a highway sign. Officers finally able to box the vehicle in between two patrol cars and arrest their guy. I told him he could have hurt somebody, he could have hurt himself or he could he could he could he could have been killed. You could have killed somebody else. That was Stephanie Ramos reporting. This isn't the first time that 10 year old went on a joyride. Earlier this month, he took his mom's car for a spin. The family says they think he got the idea of reckless driving from playing video games. And here's Chief Neurologist Joe Diaz with the forecast. Hey, a pretty pleasant Sunday afternoon. We topped off at, uh, well, 68 degrees is where we're sitting right now. Look outside. Enjoy your evening. Look at that. No wind. It will be a whole lot different this time tomorrow. All right. Here's what we're looking at. Windy and cooler tomorrow with some snow showers.
showers developing north and east Monday and Tuesday and kind of a ghoulish chill on your Halloween along with a few showers to work around. So we'll wake up tomorrow in the 40s. All right, as we get into the afternoon on into the evening as well, 50s and 60s, so not as warm as today, but those winds gusting up to 40 miles an hour, not just in the afternoon, but tomorrow night as well. And that front dropping temperatures 20 degrees around Raton, Santa Rosa on into Roswell. Now you notice from Farmington down into the Deming area, not a whole lot of change for you there. It's mainly the eastern part of the state and eventually some of this snow will work from Raton down into Las Vegas. This would be tomorrow night. Now going into Halloween, lower elevation, some rain showers to work around, upper elevation, some snow showers to work around. You see that cool, unusually cool statewide in the 40s and 50s and that will be the play for your Halloween night. It looks like those showers will be tapering off at least and then look at the warming trend. You get to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, boom, above normal temperatures and then winds start to crank up again on Sunday. So <laughs> tomorrow, the wind. Halloween day, a few showers to work around. Halloween night, no sweet cooler, but uh, probably fewer showers. Oh, wow. And some bats, uh, apparently. Yeah, look apparently there will be some bats. Right, they like to come out at night. That's why we put them in. All the right, we'll keep our eye out. Thanks for the warning. In November. I know. I know. Big turnaround. Yeah. It's like you lose track of when, you know, where we are. All right, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Joe. A tech giant is.